self-care and confidence. This is my favorite video of all three. So this is the last video in the little playlist of Self-Confidence 101. So once you watch this, you can go back and reference these as often as you would like. And it really is going to show you the build of A, what it is in the first place, how setbacks and mistakes are amazing for your self-confidence. And this is my favorite, and that is self-care. Self-care breeds self-confidence. They are romantically linked and they will always be romantically linked. Self-care can come in many forms. I will tell you this, it is proven countless times over and over and over and over again. Physical exercise, I mean, it has a million benefits, right? Physical exercise also builds confidence. And I don't mean by losing weight. I don't mean by putting on muscle. That's not what I'm talking about. It's showing up for yourself. Okay, if you're physically capable to move your body, that's what you're going to do. What you're not going to do is you're not going to ever work out and be an exercise to lose weight. You will never, I never advise to work out to lose weight. That is a byproduct. You are moving your body because you're dedicating that time to yourself. When you put yourself as a priority, that is the biggest self-confidence builder you will ever have in your life out of all of them out of all of them. Now, all of the other ones are important. Setbacks are important. Uh, doing things scared are important. Yes, but showing up for yourself is the most important thing you can do. Because when you have self-confidence, it breeds self-esteem. When you have self-esteem, you're like, ooh, that's a toxic relationship. I'm out. You're not dealing with other people's opinion. You're like, oh, well, that's them. If they're criticizing me, it's about them right? You, you shut that down. You, you're not as codependent. You're not as attached. You're not in, in bad attachment. You're not in any of those things because you know that you are the person who matters most to you. Now, this is the part you need to get clear in. You do not and should not be anybody's priority. Not even a little bit. You should be second to them. If you don't like it, then you get out of the relationship. But to that point, Everyone else must be second to you, including your children. That is not selfish because when you're good, you're able to provide better quality to the people who you love. You're able to show up for them. You're not saying, well, I'm pouring from an empty cup. So if it's journaling, five journals, highly recommend the five journal series. Go to the five journal series here and why I recommend it. Um, it's meditation. It's creating a morning ritual. It's creating an evening ritual. It's moving your body. It's starting new hobbies. It's learning a new language. It's getting the facial. If you have the means to do so, get the facial. Go for the walk. Take a trip by yourself. That's right. Oh, I'm afraid. Go on the trip by yourself. One of the best things you can, it doesn't have to be big, like go across the world if you don't want to, though I would advise it. Um, but maybe it's a weekend getaway for yourself. Maybe it's camping by yourself. I mean, obviously be aware, or look at your surroundings, but do not feel obligated and in need of having someone with you in order to enjoy yourself. It's always nice to share something with somebody, but it's very important to share something with yourself, right? So happiness and health is going to come to mental health. I'm a, I mean, physical health too. We all need physical health. And that's what the exercise is good for as long with mental. There's also countless and countless and countless and countless uh, studies on how exercise moving your body is able to uh, change so many uh, different things within your mind. All right. The things that you do create doing a new hobby. Like I picked up crochet. I play pickleball. New thing. Crochet I did in the beginning of, of the pandemic. Pickleball, I'm like six months in. Singles pickleball. Love it. Do I still have to work? Oh, yeah. Am I as bad as I was when I started? No, I'm much better because I didn't let it stop me, but it's me showing up for me. You have to have non-negotiables within yourself. Okay. Your time is valuable. Again, to reference Dan Sanders, I was, I was listening to his book. That's why he's fresh in my head anyway. But he was saying how everybody knows, leave me alone in the morning. Do not speak to me. Do not call me. Do not text me until my morning ritual is done. That is not being selfish. That is not being arrogant. That is protecting your peace. And if you don't have non-negotiables with yourself, for yourself, everything else is secondary. Doesn't matter. None of that matters. None of that matters. If you can't show up for yourself on a regular basis, that's going to be a big problem. 
you, why would you feel guilty about it? Why? That's not confidence. That's insecurity. That's the need to please people. That's people pleasing. Now we venture into people pleasing. You cannot put yourself as a priority and people please at the same time, nor should you ever people please. They're not going to like it. I'm going to tell you right now, you, they will not like it when you start putting yourself as a priority. And that is not a you problem. That is a them issue. So learning a new language, right? Learn it. Think about that. Like right now, if I was like, hey, speak to me in Japanese, you might be like, oh, yeah, I got nothing. And then you might look at some Japanese and you might go, oh my God, that's hard. I, I can't do that. You can yeah, yeah. Oh, because it's not easy. Because it's not easy for you. If you're looking for easy, you're looking for fast, that's the opposite of self-confidence. So maybe you don't take on the whole Japanese language in a week. Maybe you say, I'm going to learn a word a day. That's always advisable. Learn a word a day. And I mean, really learn it. Learn the dialect, learn the tone, learn how to pronounce it, learn what it means. So if you want to take a new language, learn it. Like I, there's so many different ones like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, like all of those, right? Babel, I guess. And so what it does is it'll also help you with the dialogue. You can't learn Italian or Spanish in the blink of an eye. When you understand, this is self-confidence. When you understand the origin of the language, why, like in Spanish, right? Spanish is different than English. So you're going to add different things. You're going to take away. The English language is very weird, Right? Because there's spelling, there, there. You're like T-H-E-R-E, T-H-E-I-R, there, ours, like there, like a person. There means over there. There's a lot of craziness, right, that comes to the, with the American language. So if you can learn English and you speak English, you can learn another language. And if you're learning, if you come from a, a place that, you're, that, that your native tongue is something different than English, give yourself patience because the English language is messed up largely. And we don't even really adequately use the English language because we're, we're talking about the Queen's language, blah, blah, blah. Boring, but relevant. So ask yourself, do I want to learn a language? Do I want to learn a new hobby? Um, will I be willing to learn the new hobby and give it time to bring me joy? Because when you first start a new hobby, you're going to be like, this sucks. I don't like this hobby. How do you know that? Because it's hard. Good. Stop looking for fast fixes. And that self-care, self-care creates self-love, self-confidence, self-awareness, self-acceptance. Look at that. Look at what self-care can do for you. It can keep you present. It can allow you to know what your non-negotiables are. It will allow you to be your biggest priority. It will allow you to accept that you don't have to be anybody else's priority. It can allow you to say, hmm, this doesn't serve my best and highest good. It's time to distance from this. It's accepting that relatives aren't family. They can be, but family can be family that aren't related to you. So you have to create that self-care, create the, that journaling, create that meditation. Um, when you invest in your own health, if you want to eat healthier, again, we're not doing this to lose weight. If you want to eat healthier because it makes you feel good, because you're wanting to put your uh, diabetes, your health, your blood pressure, what, put that as a priority. Why are we putting this job that will replace you in a heartbeat? Why are you working 96,000 hours? That's not self-care. Know your non-negotiables. If you need to have time to decompress in the evening and maybe you're going to watch TV, stay off social media. That's not self-care. So social media is not self-care. Let's be very clear there. Unless you're using like uh, using social media for like a, like an intentional purpose. Like I'm going to have this workout routine. Fine. But scrolling social media is the opposite of self-care. It's self-avoidance. It's distraction. Okay? So I want you, I'm going to ask you to write down three hobbies you would like to explore. Maybe it's pottery. Maybe it's knitting. Maybe it is crochet. Maybe it's painting. I don't care. Write down three hobbies and then write down the one that you're going to start first. See what you need to do. Don't just jump out there because it looks fun. Be aware that you're going to suck. You embrace that suck. You're going to suck at it. You're going to think it's terrible. Good. Face it again. You got to give things an opportunity. You know, self-care is not a luxury. Self-care is mandatory to your mental health and your physical health and the relationships around you. When you have that non-negotiable, going back to Deion Sanders, when you have that non-negotiable, and I have that non-negotiable, 
in the morning, if I'm playing pickleball or if I'm working out, I'm not, don't, I'm not available. No, don't talk to me. Don't speak to me. Don't, I mean, you can text me. I'm going to answer it. Don't do any of that. And I will not let that distract me. So I'm also going to challenge you to create you, yours. Mine's an hour, hour and a half. Yours might not have to be that long. Start with something small, 15 minute routine in the morning. Don't give me any nonsense about you don't have time. You got to be at work at six. Then get up 15 minutes earlier. Stop making excuses, period. Excuses do not breed self-confidence. Do, do not, does not breed self-confidence. Showing up when you don't want to, that breeds self-confidence. So that is the wrap on self-confidence 101. There's a lot of areas that you can implement it but you got to be willing to be uncomfortable. And when you are, you'll start to love yourself more. You'll start to have more self-esteem and you will definitely have more self-confidence.